Hey, how's it going, guys? Is this the cheap alternative to the Dr. Viva Sports Watch? This is the Goku Smart Watch or Sports Watch available for under $70 on Amazon. I do want to thank them for sending this out. So on the back, you have all the sports that are compatible with it, as well as some specifications here that it does have a CPU. I've never seen that CPU before, but it's definitely a low-end one. A 1.3 inch screen, IPS 240 by 240. IPS is nice because you won't have any viewing angle problems. Normally, they won't be a problem on a watch, but uh, it's always nice to have. A 220 milliamp hour battery and on the bottom it seems like you can get a direct scanner for the app itself to find on your phone and this is actually just five dollars cheaper to the dr viva watch but let's see what we get inside so you got the watch itself that's pretty nice i guess it was left on put that to the side and you get an extra band here which is always nice to have so they are removable so then you get the user guide, a charger, and then this looks like a SIM tray. It's used for the SIM, but it's really just to remove the watch band here. And you can do it like this. And so there is a little hole there, but it's really hard to put back in. I just took it out and there's like this little part. Let me show you on this one here instead that this can be removed the inside of like the steel like stick. This whole thing came flying and I couldn't find it anywhere, so I guess I'm at a loss there. So it's really a pain to put it in and take it out every time. So just be careful with that. I got this band back on using the other band's connector. So this is what the watch looks like. And on the back you have the heart rate monitor as well as the charger. And I gotta say, this looks really nice. There's nothing on the sides, so it's just like a plain, simple watch. I like how the watch looks with this, but the problem here is that this is too big for me. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and adjust this somehow. I normally go to a watch place outside, but that's beside the point. That's why I like the other one better because it's more adjustable. Now here's the big downside and the deal breaker. On Amazon, it does say it a, has a touch screen here. So down there it says it, but the problem here is that there is no touch screen. It's just one button on the bottom here. You can't move around here or there. You can only go through the settings using one button here. And the worst part is, is that you can only hold on it to go to the next part. There's not multiple buttons or an actual touch screen to move around. So that's kind of a pretty inconvenient in and of itself. And not to mention misleading, but I hope they can fix that on their listing. Otherwise, I'll have to mention it to them. This is what the watch looks like with the other strap. And it doesn't look that much worse. Uh, I was thinking it would look really bad, but I guess it's not so bad because it does blend in with the all black. Obviously, I would prefer the other one, though. It looks more natural with that. To each his own, it's still pretty comfortable. I know I put it on the wrong way, and there is a flick to unlock, just so you know. So that means you bring it up, and it unlocks. It's just locked there. But it is pretty accurate, I gotta say. But it also turns off after a few seconds, too. So to connect this to my phone, it was called the M11. I looked this up online, too, and it's actually a cheaper version of the watch than what I saw on Amazon. So I'm not, I can't confirm whether they're the same ones or not, but I'll have a link down below for both in the description box and in the comments. Then you can download the app called DA Fit to Fit. I um, believe I have an account made already with them. Uh, either way, you can make one. And then you can click to add device in the middle and then click add device and then M11 should be there. And then it says, do you want it to access your location? I'll say only while using the app, and it shows you the battery percentage on here too, so that's kind of nice. You can also change the watch interfaces from here, which is definitely a plus because it's like a pain going through and just tapping all the time to, to navigate through. Now, of course, uh, this is similar to a watch that I tested out a while back, which was the V11 smartwatch. It's nearly identical to that, but there are a few differences here, and they're about the same price too. So this is definitely looking like an upgrade already based on the overall look and the battery life, which it claims to have 30 days of. It is a 220 milliamp hour battery, so that is quite a bit, but it does look promising based on it only being at 99%. So, I mean, again, we'll have to double check everything later on down the line. Anyways, going back to the app for a second, you're able to change the notifications where you wanna get notifications from and where you don't. These are the apps that are available, and plus there's other down here. So you can have it on or off, and then there's alarms you can set too, apparently. That's pretty nice. And then there's others as well. And then there's data all the way on the left. You can refresh it up here. You can see your steps, sleep, heart rate, blood pressure, blood oxygen, and outdoor running, how much you ran, based on whether or not you've used those functions. But looking at the watch faces, here's the dial three interface. 
The thing I like about this is that the icons are bigger. It shows you if Bluetooth is connected or not, and this would be gray. The Bluetooth icon would be if it wasn't connected, and the battery icon on the bottom right, as well as the time. It's a little bigger, and plus you can also see that it's Saturday. It shows the date and time above. Dial 1 is even more sophisticated. It just shows you the date, the time, and then your blood pressure or your heart rate. I do wish there were more than just three options to pick from because uh, I don't really like any of these three now that I'm looking more at it. If I were to pick one, I guess the main one would work. So anyways, when you tap on the button here, it goes forward. It doesn't go backward. That's just what I noticed. Uh, and it, if you want to get back there, you have to tap this like six or seven times to get back to the main thing you were looking at. So, so this is the pedometer. It shows you your kilometers, how many calories you've burned so far, and the steps you've taken. The next one is deep sleep, so I guess you hold it to turn it on, I'm guessing, or it automatically just stays on if you leave it there. Uh, it'll lock by itself, but when you tap on it to open it up, it'll stay on this screen. And the same goes with any other feature. If you stay on the heart rate and the screen locks, when you come back to it, it'll stay at the heart rate. Now, I can't test out the heart rate monitor's accuracy, but I did get the same as the Dr. Viva smartwatch. I did get the same rate, so uh, I don't know if that'll tell you much if it's accurate or not, so take that how you will. Take it with a grain of salt, that's what I always like to say. Then there's training mode. If you hold this, you can see all the sports that are available, like walking, running, cycling, skipping, badminton, basketball, football, swimming, and you can also go back. So if we hold walking for a moment, it shows you all the steps you've taken, your blood, your heart rate, and how far, you, how far you've walked, as well as your calories. And then the timer is on the bottom. So you can stop this too, and you just tap this, you hold this, and then you gotta stop by holding this here, the button. And you see how this can be kind of uh, tedious, because you always have to just press one button instead of tapping on a touchscreen would, would be always easier. That's one thing I didn't like about the V11 smartwatch too. But anyways, moving forward, here's the message app. It should show you your notifications. I guess you're not really able to delete these because it's like I'm trying to figure out how when I hold it, it doesn't work either. And then when I try to go to the end, it just takes me back here. It's also unfortunate. And then you got BP here if you hold it and get that tested. Again, take this with a grain of salt along with SPO2. I got 98%, I believe, when I tested it out. And then there's the shutter. Now this won't automatically work. You have, to use this, you already have to be in the camera app. So you just hold the shutter button and it should take a picture for you right there, just like that. One other interesting feature that you can add on here from the DeFit app is the weather. So when you configure that in the place and location, it'll update the weather on here. Then you've got the music player. You have to be playing a song or something along those lines here for this to work. So if I go into my Amazon Music, and then you can hold this to get into the player, and you can start playing stuff. You have to hold this to play something. So hold this to play, hold it again to pause, tap it once to, and then hold to go to the next one. Then you tap it once more, and then you can hold it to go back, or you can rewind when you hold it to go back. Again, pretty tedious stuff. This is a deal breaker in and of itself, I can see, because I probably wouldn't get this if I had the choice. And then there's other two. So in other, you have the stopwatch, the barcode scanner for the app, a reset button, a power off button, and then the brightness. So you can adjust the brightness. It claims to be able to you that you can see the south side. That's the claim. And then this does get look relatively bright. Let's see how it is outside in sunlight. So I took this outside, and it's really hard to read stuff. It's barely visible. You really can't use this outdoors in direct sunlight. One thing is that when you have an incoming call. The only thing you can do here is just hold the button here to decline it. This doesn't have a microphone or anything along those lines, so you can't make calls through here. Overall, I would say that this is a better choice than the V11. I'd pick this up because it is a little thicker and the battery life claims to be better. I can't confirm that, but based on that, I would choose this over that. But if you're willing to spend a little more money, like around $60 to $70 is your budget, then check out the Dr. Viva smartwatch. This is so much better. This, I can confirm, has a five to seven day battery life, give or take how much you use it for. An actual touchscreen is a lot more convenient than a simple button on the bottom where you have to tap all the time. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Leave a like if you found this video helpful and subscribe if you want to see more. As always, thanks for watching.